for 16 years on the city council, we were hounded by the older neighborhoods that were deteriorating because they had no control in the CCNRs that they had really had no teeth in them. Development started to occur under the age guidelines. Development started to occur under the age guidelines. HOA guidelines were put in place to preserve the neighborhoods up and make them safer. Keep property values up and make them safer for the new people that live there. A normal street, residential street is 32 feet wide. Face-to-face occurs. And that room enough to park on both sides of the street so that a car can clean the park cars. Assuming that the car isn't sticking two feet or parking two feet away from the curb. But that's been a Phoenix City standard and most standards for years. Electors are 40, majors are 64 foot wide and wider depending on the traffic conditions. But when you go into an HOA, you sign a contract. If you don't read the contract and understand the contract, that's your fault. It's not mine. I read mine. I know what it says. And I know that if I want to park an RV or something, I have to go down to the board to get approval to do that. And that's what I would expect from anybody in the HOA. My neighbor came across the street because he was expecting one and asked me if I had a problem with it. I said no. He got that permit. So if you want to protect property values, and you want to protect the safety of the community under the HOA, you follow the guidelines. It's real simple. If you don't, you pack up and move. And I've lived with it. If you go into Maryvale, which was built in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s, they had no guidelines. Property values were going to heck in a handbasket. We got into the situation with young families coming in in the 60s that had maybe one or two kids. By the time the family matured, they maybe had four or five kids, and the kids got old enough to have cars. Guess what? The carport and the room part, one car in the front yard on concrete, did not account for the space or give space for the other three cars. They parked on the street. So there's two sides to this battle. We changed the design standards on the cars and about parking spaces on the front yard so that we could get cars off the street. But there are conditions that occur that you can't do that. It is the HOA to enforce those. It's not the police. And I had many a fight. And I remember some lady sitting on the fence screaming because I had passed an ordinance that forced her to park her cars in her backyard. The neighbors didn't like her parked out in the front. So there's two sides to this battle. You talk about parking on the streets. Now, if you don't read them and sign it, that's a whole different rule. If you are under an HOA, it is the HOA's job to enforce those, not the police. And that happened when they went to the city and said, we want to build this subdivision and we want to do this development agreement. And within that development agreement, there will be CC&Rs that control this and this and this. And we will have everybody read them and sign them so they know going in contractually what they have to live by. Now, if you don't read them and sign it, that's a whole different rule. But to now say that for the last 30 years of building HOA and them having the policing authority within, you want to turn it over to the police, starts to put an undue burden on the police departments that they never had. Just because people aren't reading their contracts, they're willing to follow them. I'll grant you some HOAs are more than unreasonable. That's up to the HOA themselves or the managers. That's for you to get your neighbors together and go down and set them straight on the level of enforcement if you want. Old cases on non-working trucks and vehicles, 
I have one really of the biggest complaints we had in the, no, the old neighborhood because there was no way to enforce it. They were parking semis on the street. They were doing overhauls on the street. They were doing it in their front yard because there were no guidelines that they were forced to operate under to keep the neighborhood organized. The city of Phoenix developed a neighborhood service department. I know because I got in the middle of it. To set some standards and go do that in the older neighborhood. It does work. But I have a real problem with folks coming in here who live in HOAs that are not happy with rules and regulations that they should have read and obviously would have been required to sign. Now looking for relief that can be there under some of the guidelines that we adopted in Phoenix by neighborhood complaints and getting neighborhood services out there to do it in addition. Rather than make this a police state, I don't know how many HOAs out there. If you start this ball rolling that this is a state law, somebody better know how much it's going to cost to do this before coming in and say, whoops, let me at least do the real job. Which is protecting the neighborhood safety and the public in general. I have a real problem with this. We've had this discussion before. I think part of it is because of the 16 years I spent on the council as we developed the HOA process because that's what people wanted. They wanted nice subdivisions, they wanted clean homes, they wanted nice streets, and they wanted the idea that we had. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Senator Nelson. We got that. Now we're coming in and saying, whoops, we made a mistake. And we don't want to live by those rules. Why don't the HOA membership change in each HOA? I have a problem with the state telling everybody out there what they've got to do. And they have the ability to collect their own elected body within HOA and go down and change those rules. I just want you to know where I'm at. We've had this discussion before. Yes, we have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Senator Nelson. We have. And you bring up the same argument that we've heard year after year. And I think your main point is the contractual issue. In this particular issue, that does not apply. Because, frankly, the HOA cannot have it both ways. There are HOAs that do own their streets. They maintain those streets. And they have the liability over the safety of those streets. And for those reasons, they can legally restrict parking and other activities on those streets. Now, there is a remedy for that. If HOA that currently regulates areas, there's never really specific DNRs over which areas. Because they know legally they cannot do that. But they can make a contractual agreement with the city, with the name of the county that they live in, and buy those streets. And then the cost for that will transfer to the homeowners. Their rates will probably go up. But then they will be able to rightfully regulate and control those streets for those residents that want that. According to those three CNRs that they agreed to. The three CNRs that they agreed to now under a public street is that it is not a legal contract that they agreed to. It's an assumed contract. And you're assuming, I believe, that I'm trying to take away as a state legislator their right to make a legal contract. To make a legal contract. I am not. I say that as legislators, we have to stand on the side of the taxpayer as they are now. And all residents in this state who are affected by people that unduly regulate the public areas. And that includes public streets. The safety issue is another issue that I think has been thrown around kind of willy-nilly. That it's going to cause a lot of safety issues. And with all due respect, Senator Nelson, you know much, you have a much deeper history.
jury sitting on city council and an ordinance committee were not so well stated as they are now, that every municipality has those well stated ordinances in place regulating what can be done on a public street. And I've lived on our same public street for years and years. And when we have, there was a boat park not too long ago, a huge boat park on one of our public streets and in a residential area. And the next day there was a sticker on it and it was towed the following day. It was out of there. These things can be rectified. They should be rectified. And they are rectified by the proper authority. And the proper authority is not an HOA or their management company. All they can do legally actually is fine. They can't even remove the safety obstruction. I appreciate your position. Senator Ensignore. How do you reconcile that? How do you